<laughs> a new study out of the University of California is diving into the world of worries. Participants had to share things they were anxious about had to document if those concerns then ever became a reality. Yeah, so 85% of those worries never came to fruition. And for the other 15%, the majority of them found that they managed those situations better than they had expected. So Dr. Katie Stewart joins us now to talk about the impact that worrying can have on all of us. We are all guilty of it. We are. We're all guilty of it. Um, but this can actually, like, I think, keep us up at night. So where do these anxious thoughts come from? So Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect question. Because I think this sounds like great news, right? That, yeah. that wait, we're not alone. 85, we're not alone, yes. absolutely. And also 85% of those things that you think are gonna happen don't happen anyway. Here's what I hear. In my office, so many people have shared the belief I have to worry. <gasps> this is me. Right? This yeah. is me. So then it won't happen. Mm. And unfortunately, this study, as wonderful as it was, reinforces that belief. Yeah. So that's where we have to start. We have to dismantle this idea mm -hmm. that somehow thinking about something means it's not going to happen. Because if it worked that way, it would work in reverse, right? Yeah. And we'd just be making all this great stuff happen. You are speaking my language. I am so guilty <laughs> that for, I've always been very hard on myself. So, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, I felt like if I'm not hard on myself, I'm not going to be right. successful. Right, right. I know that if feeling, I don't do yeah. that worrying, mm -hmm. it's not going well, to happen right. Worry serves a purpose. It is good for us in some ways. When it goes too far and we're not sleeping, it increases stress. But there is actually something in psychology called the inverted U function of okay. worry. So basically, if we're thinking of the inverted U, we want to worry right here. If we worry all the way here, it tips us into essentially a bad performance, right? Okay. Or kind of taking over. But there is this right amount of worry. But it, this idea that we have to is really scary to me because, you know, we hear a lot about limiting beliefs. Yeah. I think this might be one of the biggest ones, that I have to put all of this energy into this thing when 15%, and I'm gonna say, I think it might be even less than that because there's something called confirmation bias. Yeah, We yeah. pay attention to what we believe. So maybe 85% so yeah. didn't exactly happen. I don't know how this was verified. Yeah. Mm. So, and I've talked to some people, actually we were talking about this yesterday in the newsroom, and someone said, well, you know, let's just give an example of, um, I, I'm worried because I have to get out of here at a certain time because I have to let the dog out. If I don't let the dog out, the dog is gonna go to the bathroom in the house. So I'm gonna worry about this all day and make sure that I'm out at this time. And the, this person said, if I'm not worrying about that, then it's not gonna get done. Like, right. I need to spend my energy focusing on this. Which is another, a little bit silly belief, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's going to get done. I like to ask people, when's the last time it didn't get done? Right. It, just this whole, <laughs> I know, so I, I actually know, I had a great getting anxiety. Just I, know, having this I, conversation. Well, I had a great experience with one of my my patients who's a worrier, and you know he has to worry. He pre worries, and he was actually going through a lot of life transitions: moving, selling a house, buying a house, new job, all these different things. He had all of these worries about listing the house in Pittsburgh. The realtor's there. The photographer's there. As the photographer is shooting the front of the house, a raccoon runs under the porch. <laughs> oh my God. Right, and Heather, that was my response. And I'm like, oh my God, Katie, you're the worst psychologist in the face of the earth. <laughs> Sit down. So he looks at me and he said, what? And I said, okay, you have worried and worried and worried about this. Did you worry about a raccoon going under no, your porch never. as the photographer? Was it on and the bingo he card? Said, no. <laughs> right. And guess what? He handled it just fine. Uh, yeah. And just beautifully. It's, and it was, it was all fine. You know, I, I start to, actually, I think you guys just reported on it this morning. I think there was this connection, or I read something about um, anxiety and dementia increases. Yes. Yeah. Well, and I so think it's the stress, it's, right? the stress. it's all this inflammation. So we're seeing this, and I know that true anxiety disorder can be different than maybe a worry wart. Yeah. There can be a difference there, and we all have worries. But I do think that there is this stress that we can put on our bodies, mm -hmm. physically, mentally, emotionally, if, we, if this becomes our whole being. It does. And so here's another thing that I want to throw out there is another one of these beliefs, I think, is that because I have this thought, I experience this thought, I have to do something with it. Mm -hmm. Why? We have so many thoughts. I mean, there are different studies. It's something like 10,000 thoughts a day. You cannot possibly Back do up. something about all of them. So why is it this one that That's I have to possibly. do all of these things that you have to do it? Also, like, what's a thought? Yeah. What Where does it, it come from? Oh, gosh, now this we're going deep. deep. Wow. <laughs> we're going right? really deep now. It's nothing. <laughs> you cannot touch it. You cannot taste it. You cannot smell it. Yeah. So why? Are you giving the worst possible scenario that is probably not going to happen all of the energy that you should have for all the good yeah. things? A friend called me at a time 
American Ninja Warrior because I was such a warrior. No, but seriously, and I think, you know, it's just, you could spend that energy in so many other exactly. ways. Yeah. Because our energy is kind of finite, right? Yeah. So how are you going to use it? I know we're out of time, but gosh, I want to have you back just to talk about this and sleep because it is, for me, I'm fine all through the day. And then as soon as I lay my head mm -hmm. down, I'm like, why did I say that to that yeah. person? Yep. You Anxiety know? loves that opportunity to come in and dangle in all the quiet. little things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. the Mine's quiet going all the way back to sixth grade and things <laughs> I said then. Oh my gosh. Jeez. <laughs> Thank all right. you. Well, if you're <laughs> interested in booking a session with Dr. Katie, we have more information on our website, katiekay.com slash talkpittsburgh.